All right. Um, welcome everybody in the room and virtually um, to the National Academy's workshop on uh, in vitro derived human gametes. Um, I'm Katie Bowman from the National Academy staff, and we're really pleased to welcome everybody for this interesting conversation. At this point, I'm actually going to turn things over to the chair of the workshop planning committee, um, Dr. Ellie Adashi, who is joining us virtually. And Dr. Adashi, we're going to turn to you to kick us off and uh, get things underway for this exciting topic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. And welcome, everybody, to the National Academy of Medicine workshop titled In Vitro Derived Human Gametes as a Reproductive Technology, Scientific, Ethical, and Regulatory Implications. At the beginning, um, I would like to gratefully acknowledge, first of all, the committee that worked long and hard to make this program possible, without which we would not be here today. Specifically, I wish to thank Professors Clark, Kelvin, Kraken, Ogbogu, Sasaki, Simon, and Taylor. I'm equally grateful to the sponsors without whose assistance, again, this workshop would not have been possible. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, the Barrows Welcome Fund, the Howard and Georgiana Jones Foundation for Reproductive Medicine, and the Open Philanthropy Project. Last but not least, I would like to extend my gratitude to the staff of the National Academy of Medicine, without which, of course, none of this would have been possible. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge Drs. Pope, Stroud, Bowman, Fate, Matney, and Packard Dawson, as well as Ms. Ashley. Bologna Senior Program Assistant. Pluripotent stem cells, be they embryonic or induced, are revolutionizing medicine in more ways than one. A fact that was recognized by the Nobel Committee, which awarded the 2012 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine to Drs. John Garden from Cambridge University in the UK and to Professor Yamanaka from Kyoto University in Japan. The purpose of this workshop is to explore just one facet of embryonic and induced pluripotent stem cells, and that's the feasibility of guiding these stem cells towards a gametogenic fate. Now, to be able to do that, of course, you have to know the cues involved, the sequence by which they are applied, the timing thereof, and the niche within which they operate, which in the case of the gamete implies the granulosa and theca cells in the ovary and the Sertoli cells in the testes. It is probably somewhat difficult to pinpoint the beginning of this field. However, a key publication from 2009, which saw press on the pages of Cell from the laboratory of Professor Mitinori Saitu, is probably a good way to begin. That paper was titled, A Signaling Principle for the Specification of the Germ Cell Lineage in Mice. A key sentence in the introduction read, germ cell fate in the epiblast is a direct consequence of BMP4 signaling from the extraembryonic ectoderm. In a word, the long road to define the multiple signaling systems involved 
probably began in and around that time. Since that time, multiple investigators in several continents have explored this experimental paradigm in the rodent and in the human. Yes, some studies were carried out in non-human primates, but the main drive involved the rodent and the human. As far as the rodent paradigm is concerned, a lead breakthrough transpired in 2016, which saw press on the pages of Nature and was titled Reconstitution in Vitro of the entire cycle of the mouse female germline as contributed by professors Mitinori Saitu and Katsuhiko Hayashi. The investigators began with embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells, which they converted to primordial germ cell like cells, then combined them with gonadal somatic cells, which yielded primary oocytes and M2 oocytes before too long, as shown in the left lower hand corner, which upon fertilization, the generation of a blastocyst and a transfer gave rise to pups. In a word, starting with stem cells and ending up with pups. Professor Hayashi expanded that effort in 2021 in a paper which saw press on the pages of science titled Generation of Ovarian Falcos from Mouse Pluripotent Stem Cells thereby providing what was at the time a missing link, that is to say, rodent somatic cells that comprise the rodent niche. On the male side, a key paper from Professor Mitinori Saitu, so press in 2021 on cell stem cell, reconstituting the entire whole male germ cell development again from mouse pluripotent stem cells, thereby closing the loop in the rodent in both the female and the male. The human paradigm has proven more difficult and has yet to be successfully negotiated in full. Perhaps the most compelling paper on the female side was published on the paper pages of science in 2018 from the laboratory of Professor Mitinori Saitu, titled Generation of Human Uogonia from Induced Pluripotent Stem Cells in Vitro. Starting with human primordial germ cells, which were combined with somatic xenogeneic cells, the process was allowed to proceed, but did not go beyond the orogonial stage. In a word, we did not achieve the M2 stage of the oocyte. On the male side, Professor Kotaro Sasaki reported the reconstitution of prospermatogonial specification in vitro from human induced pluripotent stem cells in 2020 on the pages of Nature Communications. Again, not quite going all the way. In a word, there is an unfinished agenda here, especially, of course, for the human. The extant gaps involve the generation of M2 oocytes and of spermatozoa. And in terms of the niche that is required here, one would still have to successfully recreate granulosa cells, thicker cells, and Sertoli cells. In this area, a small progress was made recently reported by the laboratory of Professor George Church from Harvard Medical School on the pages of eLife wherein he reported the generation of functional ovarian granulosa-like cells. In a word, 
we are still struggling on the human side to complete the process in a successful manner comparable to that which was accomplished in the rodent. Lastly, I would like to conclude with the notion that I termed germ cell interconversion, a very recent paper that saw press in Nature on 15 March 2023 from the laboratories of Professors Mitinori Saito, Kiyoko Kato, and Katsuhiko Hayashi. This paper, which reported on the generation of oocytes from male mice in vitro, was yet another breakthrough in a field that was not lacking in surprises and breakthroughs thus far. There is little question but that this latest effort to create oocytes from male germ cells uh, will in time require additional scientific clarification, but doubtlessly will have marked regulatory and social implications that have yet to be fully elucidated. To sort this all out for us and to clarify all these missing links, uh, we have called upon Ali H. Brivandlu, PhD, the Robert and Harriet Heilbrunn Professor from the Rockefeller University of New York, who will be speaking to us about perspectives on how advances with induced pluripotent stem cells are transforming medicine. Thank you to one and all, and I'm looking forward, like many of you, to hearing the multitude of speakers, the best there is in this field, all of whom we are glad uh, have joined us uh, and will be speaking to us sometime over the next two and a half days. Ali, please take it from here.